Hey guys, Luke here, and we're back. Uh, hopefully, in the previous episodes, I did all the recording okay, because I think, I don't know if I had a setting on my blue snowball, so hopefully I don't have to do them again, but uh, I won't say what episode number is in case it's not, and I think I might have stuffed it up, but I have to wait and see. Sorry, just adjusting my chair. So uh, we're going to get into it. We're taking on former Bulldog side, so we've got a side of 17 here of... Players who played at the Bulldogs and are now playing at other NRL sides. Some of them are actually retiring this year, but we'll get to that later on. So we'll have a look at the side. Uh, and I need to make uh, mention that I've changed a few um, players here. Now, if everything goes to plan for other, other videos, you'll notice that I've had Tony Williams starting. But we've actually moved Guerra in there, we've moved Bird into starting lineup, Matt Scott and Fafita as well. Um, just to change things up a little bit. Um, just to start, because I always forget to, well, I don't forget to do subs, but the game so, goes so fast that it's hard to get the subs in. So here's the lineup for the former Bulldogs players. And you see it says former CBY. That's just because it doesn't fit in. Like, former Bulldogs doesn't fit in, so it's supposed to be as in, like, former Canterbury. And if you're wondering what jersey they're using, using the 2013 Toyota Cup away jersey, which is the same one I used for, um, oh, what was it? The used for the former no, what was it? Oh, my favourite Bulldogs team of all time. So that was that same jersey. So uh, hopefully uh, we can pick up a win here. But we're going to go over the lineup. So we got Ben Barber, Jonathan Wright, uh, Willie Tonga, Ben Roberts, Bryson Goodwin. I guess we can throw an Inu in there now, but at this stage, or well, when I made the side, uh, he wasn't in it. Oh, sorry, he was still at the Bulldogs. And he's not really playing in the NRL, so maybe not count him. And then we got uh, Aiden Caesar, Jonathan Thurston. Probably the most high-profile one since leaving. I suppose SBW as well. Um, let's make this tackle. Yeah, so we got Ben Hannett, Joel Romulo, Nate Miles, Sonny Bill Williams, Jamal Idris, um, and David Stagg. Scott. Shoot, we're going for offload there with Thurston. Well, I wasn't actually going for offload, but it got drawn in. Uh, and then the bench is Willie Mason, Martin Tapao, James Gavay, and Braith Anasta. And Anasta was the one I was talking about who's retiring. So, yeah. There should be a few others who should be retiring, but possibly. Well, not really. But they will be retiring probably like next few years. I don't know why I said that, because I think Willie Mason's a good player. And that's who I was like referring to. And Willie Tong is a pretty decent player. Um, so, you know, let's get into like, players. It's Ben Barber. Was in the team from like, I'm gonna say 2008, I think is when he debuted, and then to 2013. Uh, overall, pretty decent player, like he was really good, Dalian, but um, he had like the one standout season, and the rest of, all, rest of them were pretty average, if we're being totally honest. Oh, it's not gonna be a 40 20. Come on, Haynes, you get to that. Oh, let me give a high shot. I was trying to throw him over the sideline. God damn. Yeah, so there's Barber. Move on to John O'Wright, who's at the Sharks right now. Uh, he was there between 2011 to 2012, uh, I think. Don't think he was there 2010. Um, he came from the Eels. Uh, I think he played. He was in the team that made the run in 2009. Um, but I don't think he was like a main player. I think he was there not due to some injuries to like Inu and um, Joe Reddy and stuff. Um, yeah, so he's there. He played wing mostly at the Bulldogs. He did play in 2011. He played a little bit of centre, but generally uh, wing. Move on to Willie Tonga, who's uh, had a really successful Bulldogs career, I would say, from, I'm going to say 2004 to 2008. So he was only there for four years, but they were four quality years, uh, barring 2008, which was like full-on injury, an injury-ravaged season. So actually for himself, I think he was out for the year, but... Um, played like he went from Eels to the Bulldogs, and he um, went from being just another player, um, and then he went on to be, you know, an international player, um, a representative player is what I'm looking for. Still so move on to Ben Roberts, who he was there from I think 2006 to 2011. Yeah, I think that's right. Should have scored there with Thurston. I'm gonna give Cameron Smith for you. Bad move. Bad bad move. We're gonna go. We'll go with Thurston. Try to cut out pass. Oh, we're gonna score there. Get it out of the way, man. Yeah. So that's uh, Ben Roberts, 
Uh, he's at the Storm currently, but he m moved to the Eels. I think Bulldogs was his first team too. Really good player, well I thought. Um, just, you know, Keating was preferred and he left for money, I suppose. Um, nothing against that. They only have short careers. So we move on to Bryson Goodman, who came from the Sharks as like a nobody, left as a somebody, although he did leave as a reserve grade player. I remember in one of his last games, they thought he was going to die from like an injury, which was quite scary, but um, he went over to the Rabbitohs, he recaptured some really good form, played for New Zealand, and now he's stuck at reserve grade, which is kind of similar to what he did at the Bulldogs. Really good first season, really shitty second season, which is what is happening. Uh, then we move on to Aiden Caesar, who, I mean, he only did play under 20s, but he was, I think he was the best player that year. I think he got in the team of the season as a Bulldogs player, and uh, I believe from inside, as I said, that it was his ego, sort of, he thought that he should be playing first grade, but um, obviously Bulldogs have, have some decent halves, um, and they just couldn't fit him in at the time. And he moved on to Titans, and he's um, proved that he's a good player, and maybe could have um, played the Bulldogs but yeah and then Thurston maybe a similar situation as Caesar uh, wanted to go he really wanted to play at the Bulldogs I remember seeing an interview where when he got told that he wasn't going to get re-signed or whatever he went and sat in the car and cried uh, but he moved up the Cowboys and it was all for the best Bulldogs kept the Nasta and Thurston went to the Cowboys and became one of the best players ever um, and we'll stuck with the Nasta for another season before he left us also and then we moved to Ben Hennett who I um, was a bit annoyed about him leaving because, you know, we took him in. Uh, he wasn't, he was like a bench player at the Broncos, comes over to the Bulldogs, plays awesome, um, and then becomes like an Australian prop and all that sort of stuff. He's moved back to the Broncos from the original team he, like, the original team he came from. And now he's out of favour there and he's been dropped and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, not good for Hennett, but good for the Bulldogs where he moved on from him. Then Joel Romolo, he was somewhat of a cult figure uh, with the Bulldogs. Um, had a really big following within like the diehards. He, he, I will never forget the time he it looked like he nearly killed Travis Burns with a massive hit. And he also did the same to Fufu and Momo. Like, how many players can say that they sat Fufu and Momo on his ass with a shoulder charge? Not many. And this dude is like five foot nothing. And yeah, he's just he was all heart. Romolo, not the best technically, uh, not the best technical player, but yeah, he's like Reynolds. And in another world, Romolo would have got the gig over Reynolds in 2012 and potentially went on to um, stay at the Bulldogs. Would have been Reynolds in this situation. Then we have Nate Miles at number 10. You might not think he was at the Bulldogs, but he was. About 2006 is when he left-ish, maybe 2007. But he, was only, he wasn't there for that long, um, but he came through the juniors and all that. Played a few years and he went on to the Roosters before moving on to the Titans. Then we have the big one, Sonny Bill. Uh, what an arsehole he was for leaving the way he did. Sorry, just moving my seat. Um, yeah, I was I was talked about it in one of the previous episodes, so I won't go over it too much. As long as um, hopefully the episodes turn out alright with the other ones, I have to wait and see. Uh, yeah, but I was really disappointed uh, when he left, and it's, it was more of the way he left. If he had just said that he was gonna he was gonna leave the end of the season or something due to not liking the coach, I could have hacked that I think but the fact that he just walked out on the team without saying anything and then didn't well he wouldn't say sorry he only just said sorry like this year or last year and I still don't feel it's a sincere one it's more of a thing where um, you know it's expected of him he wants to have a good image that sort of stuff uh, yeah so we're gonna move on to Jamal Idris so obviously it was a center but he did play second row at the Bulldogs for a little bit in 2010 so I thought he'd be better off fit in the second row because Ben Roberts and stuff we have more players to cover the center so yeah, Jamal Idris, good player for the Bulldogs, um, at times went off the rails a little bit, as he has at like all clubs, but um, yeah, for the most part he was a pretty good player, I was a bit upset when he left, but it's just footy, who we went to know that it was going to be a Tim Lafay just around the corner, um, and yeah, Tim Lafay's come in and I prefer Lafay over Idris now, but at the time, he gutted when he left, um, he's good off the field, so that's probably a good thing for Jamal, um, but yeah. Then we go to the lock, David Stagg. He's one of my personal favourites as a player. Kind of in the, like the Dean Hartel sort of thing. Just, I don't know, for some reason, just it was always when I noticed the stuff he did. Um, he cleaned up a lot of tackles. And I still think Bulldogs still haven't recovered from that. Just having a workhorse in the middle there. They've got lots of big boppers, but Stagg was the one who balanced it out. 
I guess Josh Jackson does it now a little bit, but yeah, Stag, very good player, great tackler. Uh, in 2009, when he first came to the Bulldogs, like every game, it used to seem that he would get nearly knocked out or get smashed, and it was so awesome that he used to just get up and play all the time. And um, yeah, really good player. And to be fair, I never really rated him that highly before the Bulldogs, which is kind of weird because um, he'd played Origin and all that sort of stuff beforehand, so. Yeah, it was a good signing for the Bulldogs, him. Move on to the bench, we have Willie Mason. Now, he was he was another one who had a big following at the Bulldogs. Bit of an asshole off the field, but that's why the Bulldogs love him. And he was one of uh, his, some of the players who was sort of like uh, Josh Reynolds and stuff. Like, if you've got one of him on your side, you think he's the best thing ever. Uh, if you're against him, you think he's a dickhead. And right now, uh, Willie Mason, he's cleaned up his act a lot, but um, still a lot of play, a lot of team flux followers. They uh, tend to think that he's a dickhead based off his antics from time at the Bulldogs and the Roosters and all that sort of stuff, even though he's at the Knights and he's grown up and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And then we move on to Martin to Power, who, he's one of the few who, well, as not one of the few, but one of the many who didn't really get an opportunity at the Bulldogs, moved on, and he's going to have a really good career so far. I mean, I know it's only his first year at the Tigers, but he's gone on to play for um, New Zealand and all that sort of stuff, so it's pretty good for him. Um... Was all ever, like all the Bulldogs, they knew of his talents, they just couldn't fit him in the side, that's all it was. And he kept getting injuries, and sometimes he has feet for hands, and it's really unfortunate, but it's just what happens with Marty sometimes. But would, I was really disappointed that he left, but it just had to happen. And it's like it's been good for the Bulldogs, him being gone, and it's been good for him um, being gone from the Bulldogs. But yeah, he was definitely recognised as a good talent there. He was the captain of the under-20s team and all that sort of stuff, so yeah, they did value him. Just, we had better props coming already in the side. Oh, what a run, Tompkins. So then, number 16, we have James Gavay. Now, he didn't really get too much of an opportunity at the Bulldogs, but I was kind of looking for people who could fit who could fit in the side, and Gavay was the closest I could get. He, I don't think he... Oh, he played like one game for the Bulldogs. But, um, yeah, he got sacked due to discipline disciplinary things and it looks like he may get sacked by the Tigers or he's getting in trouble for the same sort of things is what I'm trying to say at the Tigers um, good player but just just can't get his attitude right it's quite disappointing because I think he has a lot of potential but whatever and then number 17 is Brave and Astor for a talk about in a little bit he cost us Jonathan Thurston really and he left us a little bit later um, was a good player on the field um, a good player while at the Bulldogs uh, a bit disappointing how he's finished his career. Uh, he probably didn't know when to call it quits. Maybe at the Roosters he should have retired. But, you know, a good career overall from an Astor, and he's retiring at the end of this year. And I think he's going to go into um, be like a good um, TV personality. He's one. I think he's one of the few with like uh, Michael Lance and stuff who actually are pretty good um, with the TV sort of stuff. So let's come to the end of the episode. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed it. And if I've missed anybody... Um, leave it in the comments and also leave it in the comments like out of your um, team that, you're, that you support if you can make a team out of players who used to play at your club um, try and make a 17 I'd say Raiders probably got a good one um, yeah so 